Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me tonight, and, and I very much enjoyed uh, uh, this dialogue and exchange uh, with Dr. Crick. I must say, uh, you're probably the most enjoyable debater I, I've gone up against. You're very thank passionate, you. you're very poetic, and I certainly believe um, very strongly. Um, but much like the others, you're, you're still wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, now, um, to, to close up here, I'll, I'll just comment on a few things to, uh, Dr. Craig said and, uh, and some of the things I want to get across as well. Um, Dr. Craig has a very powerful faith. He does not have knowledge. Or we would all have it. He would be able to demonstrate it. And, and, and so he has faith. So he had an experience. He had a religious experience, you know. As a, you know, he's, he's got a profound faith, and I'm, I am happy for him that he has, in his mind, found this particular type of God. Because if it makes Dr. Craig a nicer person, then I really don't have to worry about him busting into my house and stealing my TV for his crack habit. <laughs> so I see it as being a good thing, you know? And as long as he's not torturing animals and he's, you know, he's not abusing humans, right? It basically comes down to tolerance versus harm. I'm very tolerant of people's beliefs in, in, in practically anything, religious, political, moral, philosophical. But once the beliefs start to generate actions that create harm, and I'm not saying harm is a relative thing, I'm talking about pain and suffering that is tangible and measurable, then that is really when we have to speak up. And as long as Dr. Craig is not uh, uh, you know, bringing about pain or discomfort to others in his beliefs, what do I care? What do you believe? He could believe in goats for all I care. It doesn't matter. You know, he could pray to squirrels. It doesn't matter. But really what, what's going on is he has a very profound faith, very passionate man, profound faith because of his religious experience. Faith, as they say, can move mountains. It's powerful. No, it can't. Heavy machinery and explosives moves mountains. And these are human inventions and human qualities. And... Obviously, there are going to be tensions if you have a certain type of faith in a particular God when certain things start to happen and you're wondering why people are chipper in front of you and whatnot. If, if she turned around to me and said that, I'd say, well, why can't I experience that? And, and Dr. Craig might say, well, you're just not re you're not looking for the signs right. You're not looking for God or you're not looking for Jesus, so he's not going to speak to you or whatnot, right? I think Dr. Craig multiplies entities a little bit beyond necessity. I think he violates Occam's razor here because he attributes an awful lot of qualities to his particular uh, God of the universe. He strings what are called a lot of conjuncts together, and they look like this. The plausible disjunct, either the universe was intended or it was not intended. Dr. Craig believes that the universe was indeed intended, and he calls that intender God. And then the God is defined in many different ways, right? God has certain qualities and characteristics. He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnibenevolent, all-powerful, all-loving, and so on and so forth. He gave us his only son who died on the cross for our sins, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So many, many, many different strings of conjuncts that define his particular brand of God. And that's fine. Again, as long as his actions don't generate harm, what do a guy like me, what do I care? We sit down at a table together, we'll have dinner together, we'll you know, enjoy our company together, we'll go to a movie, and, you know, I'll live my life as an atheist. He'll live his life as a Christian. But we will share common values. We will share values that we will both act on, acts of compassion and care and charity and love. And I think we can get along very well, provided we have this kind of tolerance without generating any harm. So what happens now is... Dr. Craig has told us about this amazing experience that he's had where Jesus Christ entered, enters his heart. I've heard this many, many different times. Some of you will attest to pretty much a very similar type of experience. Right? Karl Marx once said that religion is the opium of the masses. You may have heard it as the opiate of the masses, but he could not have known how correct he was in that regard. In my field of study, in trying to understand the neuroscience behind religious experience, when you think you're right about certain things, especially the big five, 
you get opioid receptors and acephalins. You get high. Jesus is a big buzz. But what is the difference between that and tripping at a Pink Floyd concert, right? I mean, they're very, very powerful and very, very similar. So I'll leave you with the thought that consider the possibility that if Jesus has somehow personally spoken to you or God in any way has personally spoken to you, how do you know it's not just the fireworks going off in your head? Thank you. Thank you.